So I meant to do this video last weekend, but a little bit of a storm moved through Florida, so delayed a little bit, but we're back in runway ML. ML. I don't know why I said ML. I mean, that's <laughs> the name. I don't even know what the ML stands for, but we're back in runway doing video-to-video -video AI testing, and on this one, I wanted to do green screen. I wanted to see how it would handle a static green screen shot. I wanted to see how it would handle a moving green screen shot with and without tracking markers. Now, I have a green screen I can set up, but I have a smaller garage, so I can't really do the level of professional camera movement and things like that that I wanted to test in this because I really wanted to kind of up it beyond me shooting on my cell phone and stuff. So what I did was went to this website, hollywoodcamerawork.com. It's been around for a while, not affiliated with them or anything, but I just want to show uh, everybody that if you are trying to work on effects, if you're doing After Effects, uh, Unreal Engine, Blender, anything like that, and you need some green screen plates and backgrounds to test out doing different visual effects, uh, check out this website. They've got a lot of base footage. It's a uh, it's been on for a while, so, you know, we're not looking at 4K footage or anything like that. But, you know what, if you need something to test, uh, it's it's good 1080 footage, uh, quick to download, and a lot of great stuff on this website. Also, just to mention, for any uh, fellow directors out there or any actors, um, they have short scripts that if you wanted something for uh, acting class or for a demo reel for directing or anything like that. Uh, they've got some of that on here too. So it's a pretty cool site. So I would recommend checking it out. This is where we got our clips from that we're using today. So um, I'll hop back over into Premiere where I have this set up. Um, so we're going to start with the static shot that I, I used, which is of a woman that has sort of a mesh transparent like scarf cape thing that she's uh, waving around in the wind. And uh, as you can see just by the still here, it does a pretty good job at keying out. And throughout all the tests um, on all the footage, um, that part of it, it had no problem. If you have a green screen background and you're trying to do a key background replacement, a character replacement, um, it's going to handle it pretty well. Now, the quality of the background that it puts in there is debatable, and I'll talk about that. Again, it goes with the structure settings and what I kind of found in the last video I talked about where the lower the structure setting that you have, the better the human character seems to look. The more like realistic and yeah, the more realistic that that human character seems to look. But at a sacrifice of your backgrounds being less detailed, um, less realistic, for lack of a better word, realistic, but you know, less detailed backgrounds, environments, whereas on the opposite end, you go higher structure settings, more detailed backgrounds, but your human characters seem to start falling apart there. Um, and so I kind of found the same thing on this, except with a little bit of quirks. Um, let me just run it and, and, and then I'll talk about it. So here's three different uh, structure settings, structure two, five and 10. So here's two really great movement, great key five still looks good. 10, as you see, falls apart. The character just looks like a really poorly made 3d model. Um, also you can see there's this kind of double image in this. It doubles it up. So you can see the higher the structure setting, it falls apart. Now what I, did notice is that whenever I was shooting like the Western or when I was out where the movie theater was, the higher the structure setting, it built off of that environment and made it look very realistic, or at least, you know, in comparison to the lower structure settings. Whereas here, when it is completely generating the background on its own, um, I don't think it does that great of a job. I mean, this looks just sort of like a bad rendering or a bad like kind of Photoshop um, sketch or something. And 
you know, we move down to five, we go back here, that seems to sort of be the sweet spot. I mean, and that, that's the default setting is five. So they sort of, I guess, suggest that you, you go there. But I think that the person looks way better in two. So like I said, when you bring the structure setting down, your human characters are going to look better at a sacrifice of the background. Okay, so we move on to this shot. Um, I did kind of mask out. There was some light stands and stuff like this over here. So I wanted to treat this shot as if you are getting it ready to uh, key it out in whatever editing program you use. But um, so I wanted to feed it into the AI this way. I've noticed too, when a character is farther away from the camera, what it creates is often lower quality. And I think maybe that's because the farther away, it can't quite get all those details maybe. But anyway, I noticed it again here, you know, this is a structure setting five and the quality of the person is not that great. I mean, if you're going for video game style and things like that, then I think it's perfectly fine. I think this is perfectly fine for that. Um, I think anything professional level, this would not cut it is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but you know, anything below professional level, I think this could work. It, it, yeah. I guess it all depends on what you're working on, but, um, so I'll play this and then I'll talk about what I think it did and what it failed at. And then here's four. And I think maybe if you were looking, you can notice it the most at four and what it's, failing at is it's not picking up on the tracking markers what you can notice here and this is why i kind of figured that it's not using any of the tracking points because she is turning on the pavement so you can see her turning right there within the pavement so the environment is not going with her although you know you look over here at the tracking points on the floor and clearly the whole thing should be shifting and it is not doing that in the environment. She's also about to get hit by this driver who's not even slowing down. Uh, so she is not long for this world. So, you know, I wasn't really happy with the way that those couple of tests came out. So I went ahead and I came back into runway and I... Use the footage. I think this is the way their footage originally looks because how I was setting it up was the same way I set up something in After Effects when I'm going to key it out. And I usually will put on a, um, an effect that will kind of brighten the green up a little bit and make it a little bit more saturated. And I often get a little bit better of a key that way. And so I was kind of approaching it the same way, but... I think what the effect was, it was kind of drowning out these tracking points. So I, I wanted to give it a second shot with it uh, a little dimmer where the tracking points are a little bit more noticeable. And I think it came out with slightly better results. I still don't know if it's using the tracking points or not, but I'll show you the results and... Um, you can see for yourself, it, it, but it is, it is a lot better, uh, especially if you're looking at the floor. She is floating a little bit when you look at her feet. They kind of are moving around. So again, that's why I'm not 100% sure if it's using those tracking data, those tracking points, or if it's just basing it on her. Um, but I think that there might be something there. I think it might be seeing the floor because... You know, the last one we showed, she was just twisting in place, uh, whereas this one, the whole environment is shifting. Um, this was on structure five. Uh, the model here is all right. You know, it kind of loses some, uh, kind of gets a wonky right there, like she winks or something. I don't know. Um, we'll look at this one here. I did structure two. The model looks a little bit better. 
like as I've noted, the lower the structure, the better the model seems to look. Background is looking okay, but uh, not, you know, not super great. That's something I've noticed throughout all of these is that the background replacement in general isn't great regardless of what setting you put on it. But, you know, we look at this one and again, the track is pretty good. I kind of really don't have any specific idea for what this scene is supposed to be. You know, I'm just sort of coming up with something. Again, I used one of their uh, default settings here. Um, right down here, you can just go to any one of these and you could put it, click on this and it'll give you a, you know, like a pre-made prompt that you can add to. So I was kind of just using that. I really didn't have, you know, I didn't shoot this. This is test footage. So I'm just sort of spitballing. But if you are actively setting up your own shot, and you know what you want and you can tailor your costumes and your environment and things like that to it, then obviously I think you're going to get a better result. Um, now we go down to this one. This one, I didn't want to use their uh, preset. I wanted to just write in something, you know, completely different and see if it would still track it, see if it would still come out that way structure setting five um it made her a giant she is taller than mountains um i don't know maybe those are way off in the distance and she's on top of another mountain who knows but um yeah i think that one looks pretty good you know the track she doesn't seem to be sliding around as much I think another good test with this would be to try out different types of tracking markers and see how those work. Um, maybe it would pick up better on a certain type than another. So if anybody has footage with different kinds of tracking markers and you want me to use that to test out, um, feel free to reach out. Let me know in the comments. I might try to set something up myself with those kind of things. But yeah, you know, um, it's more promising results, you know, and they're not perfect. Um, Again, I think it, a lot of it really depends on the project that you're going for. So lastly, we'll jump back over. This is the last one that I used as a test. And for this one, it's a moving shot, but there are no tracking markers in it. So obviously there's not going to be any tracking markers to pick up. So it's going to determine it based on the movement of the subject in relation to the camera. And I'll just play this through. And I think that it did pretty well. You know, honestly, I think that uh, of all of them, this one is probably the best as far as movement goes. And maybe that's because of the composition of it, that the buildings are far in the background. So you don't have the foreground and the street so noticeable that it's not moving exactly with the camera movement. So maybe there's a little bit of that kind of an illusion going on there, but, uh, you know, I think that it did, I think that overall it did pretty well and it didn't, I mean, obviously it changed her, but I think it's also the closest as, um, as far as any of the other ones go. So having said that, let's say that you have this shot here and you say, oh man, I love what it did to the background and everything, but I really wanted this character here. Like I didn't want her with the face paint. I liked the, the outfit that we put her in, um, but I just really liked the background and the movement is great, you know, and all that. So what can you do? Well, you've got a green screen shot. So you can just hop into After Effects or whatever your editor of choice is and key out the green screen. And the good thing about what Runway does when it overlays, you know, its image on top of your original video is it tracks pretty well to your original video. Uh, even more so when you actually are in an environment and, you know, not on a green screen. Um, but... If you are on a green screen, you have that ability to then 
really easily key out your subject. And now you have your original subject over the top of your background. Now, does this look perfect? No, but again, it kind of depends on your project. It kind of depends on what you're working with. Are there better ways to do this that you can have more control over it? Yes, you can track it. You can put it in Blender. You can do it here in After Effects. You can go to Unreal Engine. You know, there are a lot of options. And that's just kind of what I'm trying to test here is another option for you, another tool that you can use. I think that this video to video is the first thing with AI as far as in motion goes that can really be used as a tool for a filmmaker and a creator. And so that's just how I feel right now about it. Um, like I said, is it perfect? No. Um, there's a lot you might have to do to work with it afterwards if you want to do something like this, overlaying your subject on the green screen. But you know what? It opens up a lot more options. And, you know, I think this test was very useful in trying to understand how Runway handles green screen and uh, hopefully it helped a lot of you out. If any of you are looking to do green screen projects and use Runway, uh, if you are, let me know about those as always. Uh, if there's anything that I missed in testing that I maybe could have gotten better results, let me know those two in the comments and uh, that's the end of the video.